Okay, let's look at the design form step in more detail. Every form is made up of sections, fields, and tables. Sections are useful because you can control all their settings easily in the permission stage, and they help organize your form. Let's call this first section, Request or Info. You can click here to enter any help text. To add a section, click this button. Rearranging sections is easy. Just click the Move Up button or the Move Down button. Fields are individual lines of data that you want to collect. They are the building block of your form. To add a new field, you can click on this green button, or you can click on one of the types of fields on the left menu, or you can drag and drop. Rearranging fields is easy too. Just select the field you want to move and drag it where you want it. A table acts as a separate section and lets you collect an unlimited set of similar data. Just click Add Table, and then add new column here. You can put in as many columns as you need, and the user can insert as many rows as they want. Now let's look at all the basic fields and how they function. First is the text field. We'll call this one name. You can decide if a field is required or not. If it is required, then the first person who can edit it must enter a value before they can submit it. Then you have an option to save or look at more options. In the advanced options, you see the field ID. This is the way the system identifies the field, and you can use it later. The default value puts a placeholder in the field to help your user and the help text helps them to know how to fill out the form. For example, we'll say, enter your name. We'll deal with this question, is this a computed field in a different video? You can set the maximum number of characters to any amount you wish. You can also apply a validation. You can choose between alphanumeric, where there's no special characters allowed, numeric for only numbers, or an email address. When you're done, click save. Let's call the next field, project brief. This will be a text area. A text area works just like a text field, except it has a larger input area. Here, all your advanced options are the same, but you might want to increase the maximum number of characters. We'll change it to 500. Next, we'll look at the number field. We'll call this field employee ID. In the number field, the user is limited to only digits. You can also restrict the number of decimal places. You have a lot more options when it comes to validating the data as well. For example, we'll say this should be a value greater than 1001. Now we'll look at the currency field. We'll call this field value of project. The currency field works just like the number field, except it's going to have a currency sign. Your currency is configured automatically based on the location set up by your admin. Next, we'll look at a date field. We'll call this field project start date. In the date field, a calendar will show for the user. Your validations have changed as well. We'll choose in the future for this one. Next, we'll add a date and time field. We'll call it initial meeting time. This field looks just like the date field, except for the user will have an option to set the time as well. Next, we'll add a yes, no field. Here, we'll ask the question, should Bruce attend? In the yes-no field, it's helpful to put a default value as either yes or no. Next, we'll add an attachment field. We'll call it meeting notes. Here, users will be given a dialog to attach a document. Now, let's add a user field. The user field will automatically bring up a list of all the users in your Kissflow account, like a drop-down menu. Finally, we'll add a master field. When you use the masters field, you are referring to a set of data that is used by multiple apps. Just pick which master you are referring to and which column. See the entire masters video series to know how to use masters. Now let's see what it looks like for users in real time. I'll initiate a new item from Lucius Fox. We'll say this project is scoping out a new Learjet design. Employee ID will put two. The value of the project is $50 million. Project start date should be on February 12th. And we'll set an initial meeting for February 10th at 2 p.m. I want Bruce to attend this meeting. And I'll attach my meeting notes through Google Docs.
When I hit submit, I get an error message because in my employee ID, it says the value must be greater than 1001 due to a validation reset. I hit submit and it goes through. That's how basic form building works. Now that your form is finished, you can define the workflow. A workflow is a predictable and repeatable set of tasks that go between two or more people. KISSflow is capable of creating many kinds of workflows. The most basic kind of workflow is a one-by-one -one sequence of approvals and inputs where each task is dependent on the previous one being completed. We will discuss how to create other types of workflows in other videos. As a first step, you may want to sketch out your workflow on a piece of paper. This way you can make some quick edits. Don't worry about how a rejection or a question could be handled. KISSflow takes care of all that for you. KISSflow is intuitive, so you can basically just digitize your sketch as a workflow. Let's start with a very basic workflow. First, you choose who can start your app. The default setting is all users, which means anyone who is a user on your system. If you want to restrict the users who can start this app, click Change and add their emails under Only Selected Users. Now you can add as many tasks as you want. You can add an approval task, an input task, or a parallel branch. We'll discuss parallel branches in another video. Approval tasks require the user to look over the information and click Approve. Let's insert an approval task called CEO Approval. Under Who Can Approve, you can type any user's email address and even assign it to multiple people. The advanced assignment options allow you to assign it to the initiator or other roles based on your admin settings. If you click the down arrow, you can access a few more options. You can notify users by an email when this task begins, or you can modify the deadline for the task, or you can edit when this task happens. We'll cover these features in a different video. An input task requires the user to enter information before sending it to the next task. Let's make one called Scheduled Meeting and assign it to Ms. Wells. That's how you set up a basic workflow. Check out our other videos for more details. Otherwise, it's on to permissions. Now, let's go on to permissions. Here we can define what fields are available to edit or view at each step of the app. New purchase request means what the initiator sees when they first look at it. By default, all the fields are editable. In our case, that's fine, except for this finance info. I'm gonna hide this one because it's not something we want them to fill out in the initial form. Next is the finance info step. Here everything's read only, but I want to make the budget remaining an editable field. Next is the CEO approval step. We'll keep everything read only so the CEO can look at everything to give approval. Finally is the initiator's final summary. This is what the initiator sees as a final report when everything is finished. I'll go ahead and hide the budget remaining again. Once you reach the final step, you will have a few more options. The first option is to host the form on the web. To make your form public, click here. You'll have the option of protecting your form with a CAPTCHA or requiring no authentication. You can copy the embed code here and put it on any web page. The second option is to customize how individual items are shown. This will show in your report section and you can also use this when customizing your email messages. For example, let's say I want to organize all items based on the project brief. Use the open bracket to display a list of fields available, and then choose the one you want. Here's a quick example of what it will look like in the Reports tab later on. You can see that everything follows the name we gave it. In the last option, you can add other people who are able to edit this app. That's the last step in creating an app. Check out all of our other videos for more advanced features.